Hello everyone, welcome to another video of the AWS database series. Today we will talk about the new Aurora Global Database Rider Endpoints, its benefits and key consideration for using it for your applications. This video will also include a demo how to get started and best practices. My name is William Duan, I'm a database specialist solution architect here at AWS and join with me today is my colleague Ranjini. And my name is Ranjini Menu. I'm a database specialist solutions architect here at AWS. Thank you for joining us today. And now, let's get started. What is Aurora Global Database Writer Endpoint? A Global Database Writer Endpoint is a highly available, fully managed endpoint that points to the current Writer Database instance. By using this endpoint, you can perform a cross-region global database switchover or a failover without having to reconfigure your application's code or configuration files to connect to the Writer instance. This feature streamlines the application architecture, enhances the operational efficiency, and provides the secure communication with the database instances. Now, we'll see how it works in this example in the diagram here. We have an Aurora Global database with the primary region on the left, region A, and the secondary region on the right, region B. The Global Database Writer endpoint will point to the primary writer instance in the cluster on the left. In an event of a cross-region global database switchover or a failover, the region B on the right-hand side, which was previously the secondary region, is now promoted to become the new primary region. And the region A on the left-hand side will now become the new secondary region. As a result, Amazon Aurora MySQL and PostgreSQL automatically updates the global database writer endpoints DNS entry and metadata such as Aurora global database status and instance status to point to the new writer instance, which is now located in the cluster on the right-hand side. There are no changes in the application code or configuration files required to connect to the newly promoted writer instance. Now, William will walk you through a demo and let's see how it works in the console. In the demo today, we will perform an Aurora Global Database cross-region failover and observe how the Global Rider endpoint will be able to point to the new Rider instance after the failover is complete. The database we will be working with today is MySQL 308 Global, running Aurora MySQL version 3.08 with a primary cluster located in the US East 1 region and the secondary cluster in the US West 2 region. Under Connectivity and Security, you can find the Global Database Writer Endpoint which is automatically created for your global cluster. The Global Cluster Endpoint is currently pointing to the primary instance MySQL 308 US East 1 instance located in the US East 1 region. On another tab, I have connected to an EC2 instance and will use this as a bastion host to connect to our global database cluster. Here, I have created a Python script that is connecting to the database using the global writer endpoint. And it is pinging the database approximately every one second and checks the role and region of the primary instance. As you see here, we are currently connecting to the primary instance in the US East 1 region. Now. Let's perform a cross-region failover and promote the US West 2 to become the new primary region. I have initiated the failover process and now let's take a look at the command line and see what will happen. Now we see an error message about cannot connect to the database. This is expected because a failover is happening behind the scene and Aurora will be updating the global database writer endpoints DNS entry and metadata to point to the new writer instance. Here we go, the failover is complete and we are able to connect to the new primary instance in the US West 2 region using the same global database writer endpoint. The failover process took us around 16 seconds and we recommend you to set up RDS event notifications to be notified when the failover events occur with your database cluster. Now, let's look into some of the best practices you should keep in mind when using the Aurora Global Database Endpoint. 
Before you start switching between the regions, make sure to configure the test connectivity between your application servers and the other regional clusters in your global cluster topology. Having the correct networking setup will minimize disruption following a switchover or a failover. Avoid overlapping IP addresses between primary and the secondary region DB clusters. We recommend creating separate CIDR blocks for regional VPCs to prevent the application connections from resolving to an incorrect IP address in a different region when the primary region changes. Maintain consistency in configurations of the database parameter groups between the primary and the secondary cluster. This will avoid any mismatch after the failover or switchover happens. Aurora publishes RDS event 0397 when the global database writer endpoints DNS update is complete. Monitor this event to manage your application's DNS cache and ensure proper endpoint resolution. During the global database failover, Aurora halts write to the primary cluster and emits RDS event 0390 on success or RDS event 0391 on a timeout. These events are recorded on the old primary if it is reachable or otherwise on the new primary, helping monitor potential split brain scenarios. To learn more about the Aurora Global Database Writer Endpoint, you can find the links to our blog post and documentations in the description below. And that's also an end to our video today. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.